All right, good morning, everyone. I want to welcome um, all my colleagues uh, to today's hearing. My name is Rafael Salamanca, Jr., and I am the chair of uh, the Land Use Committee. I would like to welcome my esteemed colleagues who are present today, Councilmember Gibson, Barons, Constantinides, Chair Kalos, Cool, Reynoso, Richards, Torres, Gredenchik, Chair Adams, Chair, and Chair Moya, and Councilmember Rivera. I want to thank Chair Moya, Chair Adams, and Chair Kalos for their work on our land use subcommittees. Today we will be voting on items referred out of our three subcommittees. For our zoning subcommittees, we will be voting to approve LUs 188, 189, the 55-63 Summit Street Rezoning in Councilmember Landis District in Brooklyn. Applicant PhD Summit LLC seeks to rezone the property from M1-1 to R6B and apply MIH options one and two. The rezoning will facilitate the development of approximately 14 apartments and a community facility with four to five of the apartments being affordable units depending upon the MIH option chosen. We will be voting to approve the modifications that will use 190 and 191 and the 205 Park Avenue rezoning for properties in Majority Leader Cumbles District in Brooklyn. Applicant 462 Lexington Avenue LLC seeks to rezone the property from M1-2 to R7D slash C2-4 and to apply MIH option 1 and 2. A modification to the zoning text will be, remove, will be to remove MIH option two and to add deep affordability option. This will facilitate the development of an eight-story mixed-use building with approximately 17 affordable units under MIH option one. We will be voting to approve the five Beeman Avenue rezoning LUs 195 for property in Councilmember Rose's district in Staten Island. Applicant Pelton Place LLC seeks an extension of an existing C2-2 commercial overlay to the project site to facilitate the development of a one-story commercial retail building with accessory parking. From our landmark subcommittee, we'll be voting to approve LUs 176, an, applic an application submitted by the New York City Police Department and the Department of Citywide Administrative Services for the site selection and acquisition of property located at 241 West 26th Street in Manhattan to facilitate the conversion of an existing six-story 34,213 square foot building to house the headquarters of the NYPD Bomb Squad. This property is located in the Speaker's District. We will be voting to approve LUs 152, the Landmarks Preservation Commission designation of the firehouse for engine companies 264 and 328, and ladder company 134, located at 16 15 Central Avenue in Rockaways, Queens, as a historic landmark. The landmark is in Councilmember Rich's district. We will also be voting to approve LUs 153, the Landmark Preservation Commission's designation, as a historic landmark of 53rd, now 101st Street Precinct. Police Station, located at 16-12 Mont Avenue, also in Far Rockaway, Queens, in Councilmember Rich's district. From our planning subcommittees, we will be voting to approve LUs 177 and 178, 179, 180, 181, and 182, related to Round 10 of the city's third-party transfer program. The LUs 177, 179, and 181 are all applications for the tax exemption pursuant to Article 11 of the Private Housing Finance Law for unimproved properties in Queens, Brooklyn, and the Bronx. LUs 178, 180, and 182 are applications for the Urban De Development Action Area Project Approval Waiver of the Area Designation, UDAP Tax Exemption, and Article 11 Tax Exemption for Improved Property in Queens, Brooklyn, and the Bronx. The properties affected by these applications are all subject final judgment or foreclosure for failure to pay taxes to the city. The third party transfer program was created in 1996 as an alternative to the city owning and managing foreclosed properties. Instead, ownership can be transferred directly to a not-for-profit organization designated by the Commission of Finance. Neighborhood Restore is the name of the not-for-profit organizations which will work with qualified non-profit and for-profit developers to stabilize, manage, and plan for the rehabilitation and future ownership of these properties. Each of the council members representing districts with affected properties is supportive of the transfer and each is also supportive of the tax exemptions we are about to vote on. We will also be voting to approve LUs 183, the triple HDFC tax exemption application in relation to properties in Councilmember Ayala's district in Manhattan. This application is for the termination of the prior tax exemption and for the approval of a new tax exemption pursuant to Article 11 of the Private Housing Finance Law for three fully occupied buildings totaling 68 rental units and one superintendent unit in the East Harlem neighborhood of Manhattan. 
We will also be voting to approve ZOUS 186, the Nueva, the Nueva Era Apartments application for property at 287-289 Auburn Avenue in Councilmember Rodriguez District in Manhattan. This application is for the termination of the prior Article 5 tax exemption and the solution of the redevelopment company which owns the site and for the approval of the Article 11 tax exemption under the private housing finance law for the fully occupied 34 unit residential building. We will also vote to approve ZOUS 187, the Deschler Apartments application for properties located in Councilmember Perkins District in Manhattan. This application is for the termination of the prior Article 5 tax exemption and the solution of the redevelopment company which owns the site and for approval of a new Article 11 tax exemption under the private housing finance law. The subject property consists of two fully occupied seven-story multiple dwelling buildings containing a total of 60 rental units. Are there any questions or remarks from members of the committee? Uh, I see Council Member Kalos. Sorry, Chair Kalos. Uh, thank you, Chair Salamanca. This city uh, has gone out of the, has stopped the business of managing property, and we now have a program called Third Party Transfer, where properties that are essentially abandoned by their landlords uh, can be moved to nonprofits and for profit affordable housing developers to take them over and support those tenants in affordable housing moving forward. We call that uh, the third party transfer program. Under the terms of the program, uh, these units that are often in low income communities of color uh, were allowed to be offered for vacancies at 150% of AMI, which is uh, well over $80,000 a year and well over the incomes and rental rates for those communities. In response to questions that HPD received on this, I'm, I'm happy to state that they've actually lowered the term sheet as of August 14th of this year and changed the term sheet so that the uh, highest AMI in any of these third-party transfer uh, units uh, will be 120% of AMI. It's still moderate. Uh, I would love to see it be 100% low income. They have testified that 90% of the units previously were at 80% and lower. Uh, we will be continuing to do oversight and ensuring that we reach the deepest levels of affordability possible on these. But I think that the lowering from 150% to 120% is a uh, big victory and I think the other piece that I just wanted to make sure was on the record is we did notice that uh, based on the projects that they put forward before they withdrew several, uh, the for-profit affordable housing developers on average were getting larger buildings than the nonprofit affordable housing developers, which is another item that we'll continue on. That being said, this is 1,200 units of affordable housing that will be preserved. Existing tenants will be protected. Uh, they will have enhanced Section 8 vouchers so that they are paying 30%, no more than 30% of their income, and they'll be able to stay in these units for the rest of their lives. And as the units become vacant, that's what we're talking about with the 120% of AMI cap. And I urge my colleagues to vote yes and thank the land use staff and our uh, land use chair for his partnership on all of this. Thank you, Chair Kalos. Uh, I want to recognize that we've been joined by Council Member Deutsch. Uh, any other members of the committee uh, that would like to make comments? No, seeing none, I will now call a vote in accordance with recommendations of the subcommittees and the local members to approve LUs 152, 153, 176, 177, 178, 179, 180, 181, 182, 183, 186, 187, 188, 189, 190, and 195. And to approve the modifications, I have described LUs 191. Will the clerk please call the roll? William Martin, Committee Clerk, Roll Call Vote Committee on Land Use. Chair Salamanca. Aye, I know. Gibson. Aye. Barron. Permission to explain my vote? Council Member Barron to explain her vote. Thank you. I just wanted to speak briefly on the same topic as my colleague, uh, Chair Kalos, regarding the third party transfer. There is a property included in land use item 180, which is in fact a part of uh, this vote that we're taking today, and I urge all my colleagues to support it. It's a development, a uh, six-story building in my community, which is in fact actually an HDFC. And what we were able to work out was that if the shareholders of that property were able to satisfy the requirements of HPD, that they themselves in fact 
could continue to have the shares that they presently have, which means that they would not lose the equity that they had gained, which would have been the fact had they gone through with the third party transfer. So they were able to satisfy all of those requirements. They are in the final stages of getting a loan that they need to satisfy the commercial part of the debt because they did qualify for an Article 11, so the residential was satisfied. So I do want to thank all of those who were working to make this a reality, and I've been meeting with those residents and shareholders. We met with them this week, and they understand how important it is to make sure that they maintain their responsibilities. But at this point, we're able to maintain, I think it's 34 apartments, one-bedroom apartments, with persons paying $440 for a one-bedroom apartment. And we certainly want to make sure that we don't displace people in that, in that income range. So I vote aye on all, with the exception of land use item 190191, which in my opinion does not offer enough low income apartments in that development. I grew up in that neighborhood. I live about a block away. I lived about a block away from where that is. And certainly that's a low income neighbor, neighborhood. And I think this is an effort or an action that will increase gentrification and displacement. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Barron. Constantinides. Aye. Deutsch. Aye. Kalos. Aye. Ku. Aye. Lanceman. Aye. Reynoso. Uh, permission to explain my vote? Councilmember Reynoso to explain his vote. I'll do that again. Land use number 180, third party transfer. Uh, there is a property, 142 Central Avenue, that I'm extremely concerned about. Uh, it was uh, sold to a constituent of mine uh, through the sheriff's office uh, about a month and a half ago. And it stood in the third party transfer list and it didn't allow him uh, ample time to try to pay off the taxes and the liens and uh, put this property in a position where it could be successful. And I really want to start having a conversation about the sheriff's office auctioning properties that are, are, are going to stay on the third party transfer list and are going to be lost by a property owner, a potential property owner. Um, so this person bought the property and is now losing it in less than a month and a half. Um, and I really think that there's something to be said there about procedure or systems that don't protect um, these buyers. So uh, it's, I'm concerned about it. So for this land use committee, I want to vote aye on all with the exception of land use number 180. I um, just want to have further conversations before we go to full uh, committee. No, I'm voting. I want to vote no on it. All right, thank you, Councilman Reynoso. Uh, Councilman Barron? Yes, I want to clarify my statements. I'm voting in favor because that property listed is being removed from the third party transfer list. So that's why I'm voting in favor of that. I want to make that clear. Thank you. Thank you. Richard. Thank you. Just want to thank Chair Adams, John Douglas. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, uh, for. Uh, uh, landmarking both the police precinct and the firehouse in the Rockaways, which are two institutions that uh, were built during the Renaissance revival of the Rockaways. And as we undergo uh, much needed upgrades in downtown Far Rockaway, uh, I'm glad that these institutions will be preserved uh, in the fashion they are. So with that, thank you, uh, Chair Adams. Again, I vote aye. Torres. Gordenchik. Adams. I vote aye on all. <coughs> Moya. Aye on all. Rivera. I vote aye on all with the exception of land use 186 and 187. And note that my husband works in operations at Canberra Property Group. And for these items, I will abstain. All items in today's land use agenda have been adopted by a vote of 15 in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstentions, with the exceptions of the following items. 
Uh, land use 190, 191, and 180 have been adopted by the committee 14 in the affirmative, one in the negative, and no abstentions. And land use items 186 and 187 are adopted by the committee 14 in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and one abstention. All right, I would like to thank the members of my, the public, my colleagues, council, and line staff for attending today's hearing. We will leave the roll open for 10 minutes.